Welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, it's going to be a little heavy. I, I don't know. I, I don't know if that's the right wording. I'm still processing, even though it's been quite a while since I last updated you guys. And there's been a lot that's happened. So I'm just going to jump right into it. If you don't know already, I am pregnant. Um, if you want, you, you can go check out my last uh, video, which is me announcing my pregnancy and going through my first trimester. So I'm currently 21 weeks and one, two days. 20 weeks, two days, 20 weeks, one day is when I'm filming this. So that's exciting. I'm like, you know, right in, right into my second trimester now. Um, my little baby girl is moving so well and she's doing generally okay. But there has been a few scary things for me that have happened and things that we will have to um, be very well prepared for, for when she is born and just throughout her life and things like that. So to start off with, I'm going to go through kind of, I think where I last left off which was, I believe it was just that I hadn't had my 16 week checkup yet from uh, like at, at, at the bigger hospital that I am now going to be delivering at. So yeah, the hospital that I'll be delivering at is one of the biggest um, and most highest rated hospitals in my state. I'm in WA Australia, for those that don't know. I was also born at this hospital myself. I was actually really, really premature. So um, that's also why I was mainly born there and why I will also be delivering there, not just from my own birth history, but um, also now for my daughter. So I went for my 16 week checkup. It was a follow up from the 12 week scan um, from memory. The 12 week scan, they noted micrognathia. So that's when they were like, okay, we'll do a follow up with um, the bigger hospital. And so I went there, had my 16 week checkup. This is what Baba Girl looked like at 16 weeks. It's my favorite scan of her. Um, so they noted Micronathia, they confirmed that. And I also confirmed club feet. Um, they said that her right foot is worse than her left. Um, and from that, I think I was like 16 weeks, three days at that point. And the OB that I had seen had strongly, strongly recommended to do an amniocentesis. So a quick rundown on that, if you don't know what that is, if you want, you can just skip to this time if you already know what that is. But an amniocentesis is basically a now a tiny little needle um, that goes into my stomach and into the muscle and right into the placenta where they draw out a little bit of fluid to test for chromosomes, like the, the baby's chromosomes, to see if there's any abnormalities there. To track back a little bit further, I did actually get the NIPT test, also known as the Harmony test, done. Um, I got that done at 10 weeks and then I got the results at 12 weeks. That all came back pretty pretty low risk, thankfully. So we, kn we knew that she didn't have any of the like most common uh, types of abnormalities and stuff like that, like trisomies and um, they even tested for some micro deletions in there too. So what this does is it actually just tests chromosomes, just all of her chromosomes and, you know, see if something came up and something did. So I got that done at 17 weeks and this is why it was really, really scary because my mum had one done with me when I was, and, and my older sister, um, and she, hers was quite traumatic. Um, so hers was the only experience that I was able to go off of because aside from her and now me nobody else had had this in my family on both sides so it was so as far as I know um, so it was something new so my mum told me uh, when I first got pregnant or that I told her that I that, that I'm pregnant was to like if at all like to avoid getting an amniocentesis and that was something that I wanted to do but they really strongly recommended it just so we know you know more about her makeup and like you know any, anything that we can get now um, will help the, the hospital and us as her parents um, for when she's born and like development and stuff like that. So um, I got it done. My mum was there with me holding my hand. Um, she said that afterwards like it was completely different to when she had it done. Like vastly different which you know I would hope so. It's 26 years later. But um, so that, that was pretty reassuring um, throughout the whole like uh, process of getting it done the prep took like the longest which was annoying but um because I was just like laying there just like waiting for them to be like okay can you start it now I just I just want this over with and at that point I just started feeling her movements um so that was that was pretty hard to deal with too because I was like I don't want to lose her that that was my biggest fear and still is is I I, I don't want to lose my daughter but obviously I can't I can't control everything so anyway so I had it done and 
by the way, so my, my daughter's name, we, we do have a name for her, it's Eliana, or Ellie, for sure, we just call her Ellie. During the amniocentesis, Ellie was very cheeky, and I think the OB kind of, or my doctor, kind of like jinxed it a little bit, because she was like, oh, you know, some babies tend to be a little cheeky, they like to grab the, the tube thing and stuff like that. By the way, they, if, if babies do grab it, it's not the actual needle, it's like a tube thing that they place in there so that they can safely draw out the fluid. What happened was, is Ellie's head was like right near it, they're like obviously further away, they had the scan on her the whole time, um, but as they would try to like go in and um, take some fluid out, she would like put her head back and be like, nope, you're not taking anything out. So then they would have to stop and start continuously until they got what they needed, um, but yeah, so that was that. And it was pretty, it was, it was a very emotional day because I was just so scared of history repeating itself in a sense. Um, so, yeah, then, but, but once I decided, I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do it, and I, I had spoken to Jess about it, and I was like, what, what do you, how do you feel, what do you think about it, and he sort of said, I don't really know, like, I, I can't, you know, he said, it would be good to have as much information now, as much as we can, um, he said, but it's ultimately up to you, it's your body, it's your choice, um, so, I, I decided to do it for um, you know, the knowledge for not only us, but her team and our, our team and stuff like that. So that's what we did. And then, uh, I think I was nearly 18 weeks. I think I was nearly 18 weeks when I got the results. So I was actually thankfully with a friend when I got the results. Um, so the results basically is that Ellie has a chromosome deletion in her chromosome 16. So she has chromosome 16 Q 11.2 to 12.2. Basically, this is what a chromosome looks like, and there's a P arm and a Q arm. So her little deletion is in the Q arm. That we've already had a genetics team appointment, and they sort of went through like a little bit more detail, um, and kind of what we might expect for Ellie when she's born and as she develops. But also, to like they really really preference preferenced that every single chromosome deletion is different even if you have the same chromosome deletion as somebody else in the same breakpoint like it could be different like your kid could have very different symptoms or conditions sorry to from the deletion um so that that's obviously where the machinathia and um the club feet came from um a few common like effects or conditions from this I will list on the side here we don't know if she's gonna get everything we don't we don't even know if she like she could get everything she could get nothing aside from the chin and the feet so we really and not just us but our entire team doesn't know anything until she's born um, and she'll tell us as she develops um, so a lot of it is you know autism intellectual disabilities um, development delays um, hypertonia which is quite common um, which is just muscle weakness so when she's born she could be like a little bit floppy and um, stuff like that so it just means her muscles are a little bit weaker again we won't know how severe until she's born um, like a lot of you know even her chin and her feet because the genetics team also said that the scans like the, some scans babies look you know really severe and they come out fine but then other babies look completely fine and they come out with issues so um, we, we just don't know anything. So I just want to give a little bit of a trigger warning if you are sensitive to um, terminating or th things like that of a pregnancy, please skip to this time because I will be speaking about that a little bit here. My my biggest fear is that they, they were going to turn around and say, look, it's too severe, you need to terminate the pregnancy. And that, that truly was my biggest fear and because I was feeling her move a little bit more. I was just so scared of like losing her because I, I was so connected to her and I still am. I'm so connected to her movements, I'm just like spiritually, emotionally, everything um, connected to her and I just didn't want to lose her, I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to have to make that choice. That was the biggest thing because my mum had gone through that with her first, um, her, my, my older sister and to be quite honest, I still was pretty positive even though it was a big shock um, and I think a lot of that went to my partner because his whole process of processing this has just been optimistic and very positive and he's you know he said even if she's not perfect she'll be our perfect and that's something that I've really really stuck with and it's, it's just stuck with me um, 
and it's true, you know, and I feel that we are the perfect parents for her, she wouldn't have chosen us otherwise, um, yeah, it, it, you know, I, I've had, I've had a few people say like, oh, you know, why you, why does it have to happen to you, it's like, well, why not me, you know, I'm clearly the perfect person to raise my daughter, and, you know, yes, it will be hard, she will have, Clearly, she will have, um, you know, speech delay and, and speech therapy and occupational therapy and physiotherapy and all of that stuff. But I went through that as a child, not not because I have a deletion, well, we don't know, but um, but that was just because of me being prim. I went through all that. So I'm like, you know, if I can do it, she can do it too. Like, if she's anything like me, <laughs> she she will be a fighter. Um, she already is. So it's it's something that I've. Still, st you know, there are times where I still think about it. I'm like, okay, she'll be okay, you know, because I'm also in a couple of chromosome deletion groups um, on Facebook and things like that, and they've been wonderful. They truly have. They make me feel so much less alone in this, and because nobody else around me has ever known about chromosome deletions or anything like that, that, that could be even, that that could even be a thing. So it's such a big transition for us. But I think more for me than for my partner but I think see I think for him it's different too because he can't feel her and stuff like that so it's it's a little different but I think for both of us we've processed it differently but I think ultimately we're, we're on the same page um, so then so after that I came back at 20 weeks to have my morphology scan the morphology scan for me was super quick like it was 20 minutes 40 minutes um, and I was told from a lot of people oh just wait you know you'll be in there for over an hour I'm like okay and it was 40 minutes and I think it was because we'd had you know a couple of scans since you know prior to my not prior to after my 12 week scan but thankfully um from what from what they can tell her heart and kidneys look pretty good um her heart especially looks really good so so that was something the genetics team told us too was that you know um as long as her heart mainly her heart and mostly her kidneys are you know okay and somewhat healthy and things like that and if, if it's not that it's manageable then there is no reason why she can't have a normal life or a good life expectancy um, which is really really reassuring for us again we won't know until birth but they said that the scans that they do nowadays obviously are you know vastly different to what they used to be and the things that they can pick up on now is insane it's especially with testing um, so even though it's not you know it doesn't give us an absolute 100 percent yes her heart's okay but it does give us a good reassurance um that things are looking good so then uh going through the 20 week scan um they spoke to us a lot about um her chin and you know breathing issues and stuff and what 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 we need to look out for throughout the rest of my pregnancy um and at birth as well so basically um i may possibly need a cesarean um I might be able to labor naturally and give birth naturally but because of her chin and because they don't know how severe it is it will more than likely i would imagine anyway being a c-section just because it's the safest for her um so basically what they said was for now she's swallowing really good which is great um but as my pregnancy progresses and the more i increase in fluid and things like that they they are worried that she might start struggling to swallow and breathe in a little bit more of that fluid so if 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 that does get to that point um they depending on how far along i am they're going to try and drain some of the fluid which does obviously have a risk of preterm labor but uh depending on again depending on how far along i am um they might just go straight for a c-section and when they do the c-section she basically for at, least, at least this is my interpretation i don't know if this is actually correct or not but she said as soon as they cut and like as soon, before they before she even takes her first breath they will intubate her um just to make sure that she is breathing um whether it's you know a, well, my, they would prefer her breathing through a tube at least until they can sort of understand how severe her chin is and breathing and things like that and they can check her heart and stuff like that so that that's pretty much where we're at um so my partner and i uh we had our chromosomes tested a couple of days ago so that'll take another two three weeks to come back um, it's just to test to see if either of us have carried the gene through or they said even if there's a little bit of a mix-up of one of our chromosomes that that could have caused it um, 
but they said most of the time it's very de novo, which de novo in medical, in normal terms is just um, random. It's just a random case. It means that there's no like chromosome cause, there's no like any sort of medical cause for it. So that's kind of where we're at at the moment. So it's it's been a very eye-opening and and here's the thing I I really went through this pregnancy so far of like not not understanding what I was feeling and if that was okay and obviously falling pregnant and planning this pregnancy I didn't know half the stuff that I would be feeling and going through but it's really opened me up opened it's just really been really eye-opening experience and I know being her mum will definitely be even more of an eye-opening experience um, and I'm ready for it you know what this is this truly is divine timing this is the perfect time she's come to us at a time where we're ready as much as you can be you're never really ready but you know what I mean um, and I think we're a lot more informed now than we were um, than we would have been you know 10 years ago they, they'd said the genetics team said that this type of testing wasn't available 10 years ago in WA so it's very very new and it's they've said that it's very very we're very lucky to know prior to birth because a lot of the cases out there for any chromosome or um, duplication or anything like that is that it's often diagnosed after birth like at birth or much much later you know three four years down the line yeah so I guess uh, this experience has been really eye-opening so far for like the whole family and but you know for me personally it's just been like oh I didn't expect that you know um, I mean when when would you I, it's it, it is what it is as well there's nothing that we could have done to prevent it there's nothing that we did wrong um, there's nothing that I've done wrong throughout my pregnancy it just is random and also the reason why we're getting tested too is for future pregnancies um, and future children if we don't have any genetic like pass on or anything like that then we, we we know that this will likely not happen again thankfully i mean if it does it then it does but um medically i guess speaking um it's very very rare for it to reoccur like that unless there's a, some something going on with one of us um but yeah we won't know those results until like two three weeks away so it's quite a while still but um i'll show you a little scan of my beautiful little girl um, that was at 20 weeks, so the plan from now on, um, I'm getting scans every four weeks, so my next one is at 24 weeks, and then 28 weeks, and then I guess that'll be my se my third trimester, so I'm assuming at that point they're going to start like saying like, okay, can you try and come every two weeks now, because that's the other thing is I am, we, we live an hour away from this hospital, so it's been a trek, and I'm so incredibly thankful for my mum, um, for like helping us through this and taking us to all of our appointments and things like that because she's only half an hour away so it's a lot easier. I would like to try and find an Airbnb around that area so that you know we are close to her um, and because of you know um, I'm in WA so our borders are just opening in February um, so we don't know what COVID's going to be like then um, for us and you know restrictions and visitors and well I assume there would be no visitors because she will be in the NICU most likely so that that's also a scary thing is knowing that she'll be taken out of my body or I will birth her regardless of which way but that she won't be placed on my chest straight away and that you know she'll be in the NICU with tubes and she'll probably need surgery on her, ch on her chin and her feet and things like that and that that's something that I've had to grieve now because it is it is something that you imagine doing when you're pregnant you imagine getting to hold your child for the first time and I won't have that I mean I would be incredibly lucky and surprised if I do and incredibly thankful but that's also what I'm expecting so that's been a big thing to come to terms with as well is accepting that and being okay with that because that's probably going to be our experience um, at least this time around so yeah that's kind of where we're at and um, yeah i will obviously keep you guys updated on our journey um you know when she's born and things like that when i can um but yeah it's 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 definitely been different and not what i expected but um we're going through the motions with it so let me also show you my bump because i didn't do a bump update 
uh, when I was like 12, 13, 14 weeks, however far along I was, I think I was 14 weeks, that's because I was barely showing, <laughs> I think it was a week after I'd started to show, but now I'm like, popping. Thank you guys so much for watching, um, I will, again I will keep you guys up to date, and um, yeah, thank you, and I will see you in the next one, bye.